Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you all for joining today's webinar on understanding ABDM UHI and its impact on healthcare professionals. Uh, we have three very esteemed speakers with us today. Dr. Alexander Kuruvela, who's Chief Strategy, Health Strategy Officer at Practo, Kiran Ananda Pillai, Advisor, Technology at NHA, and Abhinav Lal, Co-Founder at Practo. The session, we'll begin the session with uh, Dr. Alex talking about digital healthcare in India. Dr. Alex is the Chief Healthcare Strategy Officer at Practo with over 28 years of experience working with top corporate hospitals across the country. Dr. Alexander, with his deep domain expertise and insight, has helped Practo scale its medical teams and operations over the last six years. He has completed his MBBS and post-graduation in radio diagnos diagnosis and is equipped with an MD in hospital administration. He has also masterfully donned many hats, starting as assistant medical superintendent at St. Martha's Bangalore to being CEO, CEO at Narayana, Apollo Ahmedabad, and SMIMS Chennai. He has also been a founder, partner, and trustee at Yashishwini, Karnataka State Health Insurance, Medica Synergy, Kolkata, and MGM corporate hospitals, among others. Additionally, he has also played a major role in planning and building 10 corporate hospitals and has also spearheaded the establishment of multiple telemedicine and tele-ICU centers in India. His contributions towards planning, commissioning, and administering hospitals across India has helped bring about large-scale transformations in the way care is delivered and accessed in India. Over to you, Dr. Alex. Good morning, everyone, and uh, Keshav, thank you for that intro. Uh, so digital health has, uh, in, in, in over the last two decades, has moved... Dr. Alex, we cannot hear you. I can hear him quite well, Keshav. Please continue, Dr. Alex. Yeah, can, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, Doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, so over the last two decades, uh, uh, it's moved from OPD softwares to hospital softwares to IP softwares, HMISs, and other things to, uh, in, in the recent past, a decade or so, to discovery, which means a patient, uh, many of us as doctors, right, have spent a lot of time with our, uh, for our dear ones or acquaintances or friends who ask us, do you know a good dermatologist in Amderi, or do you know a good uh, uh, physician in some part of Delhi? Yeah, but but today, uh, anyone, I mean, the, the not so privileged who don't know uh, certain doctors to, you know, uh, help them out, can actually go out there and choose a doctor, specialty-wise, experience-wise, in a geography that they would like uh, uh, to see a doctor. So right from discovery to appointments, to reduce reduction of waiting times to pharma delivery. And of course, with it, in the pandemic, uh, te teleconsultations and uh, uh, teleradiology. And so, and today we have specialized tele, uh, telemedicines like tele ICUs, tele ophthalmology, tele dermatology. Uh, but what, what it's also transiting into is, you know, uh, with, uh, Data, data is going to be something that's going to be very critical in the coming uh, decade or so. Uh, when you collect a lot of data and you create big data and you apply intelligence over it, what, um, or artificial intelligence over it, what it can actually do is throw up a lot of information that can actually lead to a lot of strategic planning and uh, uh, implementation and uh, uh, you know uh, interventions. Uh, so, so. This data is going to be created by a lot of bedside equipment, by a lot of wearables, which you see today, uh, smart smart watches, uh, uh, bedside uh, monitors, glucometers, BP apparatuses, and of course the EMRs that's been uh, uh, you know generated by every doctor in every interaction with the patient. The key would be to accumulate all these information in a certain pattern and then try and extract relevant information that is actually addressable on a large scale. That would be the key. 
so that's how IoT is going to help. Data is going to help. Virtual reality. Uh, uh, you know, to uh, actually say how the surgery needs to be conducted, you know, uh, create real-time simulations so that less mistakes are done in the actual surgeries. And then, of course, uh, uh, you have Alexa, which is a natural language computing system, which listens, translates, and extracts, and can, you know, create EMRs. So these are some early... Uh, uh, new innovations that's going to break uh, a lot of barriers and really make digital health something that is to be, uh, uh, you know, is going to grow, grow big in this country. I'm going to, uh, can we have the next slide, please? So when, when UPI started in this country, I mean, there was a lot of skepticism and I'm sure uh, Kiran will speak about it uh, once I finish my session. Uh, his his experience, his ground experience in all of this. Uh, but UPI today, we, we are the world leaders. I just looked at the December data. And the December data said that about there are about 382 banks in, involved today. And there has been 7,830 million transactions. And this 7,830 million transactions has transacted about 12,82,000 crores rupees in a single month. I mean, this could have not even been believed a few years back with ATMs all over the place. Recently, I'm going to any of many of these ATMs, they're either shut down, the security guard is missing, or there's no money in it. Everybody is now transacting digitally, right? But if, if we use that example, and if, if this country with uh, 1.4 billion people and uh, around 1.14 billion smartphones has adapted to financial transactions like this. But e even if we take a small percentage of this uh, 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 transformation in, in healthcare, the numbers are going to be huge, really huge. Uh, so I, I just use this slide as a you know, parallel to understand. And, and I think the most important part of this, this slide is that there's 30 million merchants who's actually using QR codes for the public, right? Uh, so uh, if that's possible, you can just imagine what, what is going to happen in the UHI uh, 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 transformation because the people have already got used to uh, a way of doing things. So if that is then translated to health, a lot can be done. Uh, the next slide, please. Yeah, so uh, if you look at... Uh, one of the, uh, any of the Western countries, at an average, a person, a consumer, a patient has about 10 OPDs in a year. Uh, in India, it's about three OPDs uh, uh, in a year at an average. Even if that moves to, uh, we expect with the introduction of UHI and uh, the adoption, uh, this to move to about six a year. That's like almost doubling today's OPD in, in a short time. And what is also going to happen is that each of these uh, uh, transactions is then going to be uh, recorded and that will be helpful data both to the doctor uh, uh, in multiple ways. Uh, uh, they, they can recover all records so they can study the patient better. Repeat of tests costs money, that can be avoided. Follow up can be in many consultations where it is physical uh, it has to be physical. The follow-up could be teleconsult or in many teleconsultations, uh, the first consult itself could be uh, 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 teleconsult. People as far away as Arunachal Pradesh can actually look up, search for a doctor and reach out to a doctor in Delhi, in Mumbai, in Bangalore, in any of these places. Doctors will have a lot of data with patient uh, details masked for continuous medical education. Doctors uh, would be able to you know, uh, make claims faster, the cost of claims and therefore OPD insurances will become a reality. While for patients, it, it's an immense, uh, this thing, uh, you're actually with a, the medical registry, you're taking away quackery and you're giving them an informed choice. And that's what's important. I mean, we could even end up 
in a small town saying that only junior doctors are available, but at least the consumer knows that there's no other doctor available and therefore there's a junior doctor available, right? So he gets an informed choice of whoever he's choosing. You get a large OPD coverage and of course uh, the cost of uh, not traveling, the availability, checking on the slots, having traveled that distance, you come and realize that there's no OPD slots available or the doctors on leave. All this information can now be there so that he can travel at the right time, spend as least amount of money, and then just see a doctor if there's a physical consultation. Uh, when all of these medical records are generated, I think many of us who did medicine, especially uh, when we studied community medicine since independence, there were there was board committee uh, uh, suggestions, there was Mudliar committee suggestions, there was Kartar Singh committee suggestions over years, talking about primary, secondary, and tertiary. Many of these data that was available till now was talking about an average across a massive country and a massive population that we have. The bed to population ratio, the doctor to population ratio, the nurse to population ratio, equipment to population ratio, paramedics to population ratio, but that does not, an average does not show you what really is in the country. There are areas where there's nothing available. Averages only talk about some places having very high or very low. Today, with this kind of information flowing in, you can actually intervene into local areas to bring in infrastructure where beds are not available, to bring in doctors where doctors are not available, if not physically, at least through teleconsultation, bring in nurses. All of this data will help us address infrastructure, will help us address uh, where the lacuna is, and more than anything, can prepare us for epidemics and understand endemics of different geography. Insurance companies will have a larger coverage. Uh, OPD uh, insurance will become more viable. Probably we could even end up with a Physiological health score for individuals. You know, we could end up like 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 civil scoring for finance. Before you get into a pathological uh, 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 foray, you can actually predict a physiological health using all of this data, and you know prevent you getting into a pathological uh, 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 situation. Uh, so data is something that's going to be really really big, and. Uh, uh, is really going to help the country in getting that data and uh, you know uh, improve the health of people uh, improve the health uh, the quality of healthcare the continuum healthcare post one thing we have not done great in this country is pre hospitalization and post hospitalization uh, over the last so many decades tertiary care has been great uh, because of a lot of effort of secondary care uh, many of the digital companies are now gone into secondary care. So hopefully over a period of time, with the help of the doctors and the owners of nursing home and the combination of digital and uh, physical, we can bring uh, secondary care to life. But continuum of care, pre-hospitalization and post-hospitalization would be something that's very, very critical. And data can drive, uh, data and uh, uh, digital can drive these things. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so these are some guesstimates and some uh, some uh, probable uh, estimates for the near future uh, in terms of overall market and digital adoption. And if, even if we move from 9% to 24%, that's like three times of what, uh, uh, almost three times of what the numbers are today. Uh, and post radium, this is likely to double. Next, please. Yeah, so uh, with that background and the experience I've got in practice over the last six years, I, I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Kiran uh, Anandam Pillai. I mean, he's at the thick of everything that's happening, so he'll be the best one to actually share with all of us this transition in UHI uh, uh, that's going to happen. So let me, give, let me introduce him. Uh, he's been an advisor in technology with the National Health Authority, NHA. He's a volunteer supporting NHA to create digital public 
goods under India's two large digital health initiatives, the Aishman Bharat Digital Mission, ABDM, and Aishman, and Aishman Bharat PMJ. Uh, Kiran is a telecom engineer by training and was a founding member of OnMobile, where he helped build it to a public company. He has volunteered with UIDAI for the Aadhaar program and with the iSpirit Foundation on the health stack. All of us know the contribution of iSpirit to, to this country, and he's been part of that. He, he dedicates his time to driving impact in healthcare. He's a founder and the CEO of Gristi, which delivers high quality eye care from a district capital to a village level. I district currently manages 12 eye hospitals across Karnataka, India. Uh, with that introduction, Kiran, I'd like to uh, hand over to you to you know, uh, share with you all the experiences and what exactly is happening in this country for, for this transition. Over sure. to you, Kiran. Thank you so much, Dr. Alex. Uh, could I just uh, ask the team to just quick refresh the slide, we go, get out of presentation mode, and then can it uh, be put back on? Because I think we moved a few slides in the bottom. Uh, so thanks so much. So morning, everybody. I think uh, while the slides are coming up, uh, uh, thank you so much for joining this uh, session today. I think many of you would have been getting either WhatsApp forwards or other things about the Aishman Bharat uh, digital mission over the last year. So what we'll try to do today is try to actually help you understand in fairly simple terms, what does this mean for you in your digital practice and why should you care about Aishman Bharat digital mission? So two slides down guys. Yeah. So. Just as a background, the organization or the department in the country that's running this is called the National Health Authority. It is a central government authority, which is an attached office of the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. This is a project that's uh, very closely monitored by the Prime Minister's office. Uh, the Prime Minister actually launched this. And the national rollout has not been very long. It was just about in uh, September 27th, so around uh, just over a year ago is when this really went uh, nationally live and the adoption cycle has just about started now in uh, uh, January 2023. Next slide, please. So what exactly does this do? I think all of you are you know, here on this uh, webinar also because you have already started adopting digital. I think many of us experience digital healthcare pretty much through the pandemic. I don't think any of us ever saw a COVID report, which was not a PDF on our phones. And all we do even today to get most of our reports is to go to a website that has been put up by a lab, maybe put in a code or a login, and then we're able to see a PDF report. So in many ways, we are all experiencing digital healthcare. Now the question is, and please click on the next, please. So the challenge really here is that if you think about the approach in which we are doing it today, this PDF report, if I ask you to show you me the last COVID report you got or the last report that a patient got from some lab, if they have recently got it, they may have it, but otherwise over time, they absolutely tend to lose it. Nobody is able to collect and manage these quite easily. So problem number one is it's not becoming part of a patient's longitudinal health record. And the second problem is that these PDFs are very good for doctors to read. So, you know, they're what I call as human interpretable, but they're not very easy for machines to read. So if you wanted to see certain information over time, like a graph uh, for somebody with a chronic illness, you will not be able to easily do it if the data is not machine readable. So that's the problem that ABDM is really trying to solve. So what it says is that, hey, Mr. Doctor, if you're giving a physical copy of any report to the patient, can you also start sharing it digitally with the patient by linking it? with something that we will learn today called an Aishman Bharat health account. Somebody, some, some of you might have heard of it, it's being called an Abha. And the idea here is that you do a link if you have a health information. And second, can that digital record be shared in a standardized format? So this is not really for doctors, this is really for technology companies like Practo so that when they exchange the health information, they actually do it in a for format that's machine readable. Next. Now, what can actually be shared with patients digitally? What the government has done is 
They've defined about six type of health records that you can actually share today digitally in India, starting with diagnostic reports that includes all imaging reports, pathology lab reports, including X-ray CTs, MRIs. So in the future, we expect that when one of your patients goes to a small diagnostic lab, you will actually be able to not just see the film and the radiology opinion, but on your computer in your uh, clinic or in your hospital, you can actually see on a DICOM viewer, the full DICOM image also, and that will all flow through the system. So those are the kind of things that are coming because of Aishman Bara digital mission. Of course, you can see discharge summaries, OP consultation notes, prescriptions and immunization records. As we can expect, in the beginning, we expect to see a lot more of the diagnostic reports and discharge summaries coming in and over time as people move from hand return to uh, digitized OP consultation notes and prescriptions, we expect to see more of that coming in the health records of our patients. Go next. Now, we talked about this construct of an ABHA and the linking of a health information with ABHA. And so how do you really get an ABHA address? And so what the government has done is it's made it very easy. Consumers like you do in UPI today, today you don't think about when you go to a merchant, you don't think about what you are paying with. You know, you may be using a Paytm, a Google Pay or a Beam app, whatever it might be. Similarly, there's a whole bunch of apps that consumers can use, including the old Arogya Setu, which was a contact tracing app has now become, is becoming a health app for India. And so Arogya Setu, Practo has also implemented a health app for consumers. There are others like Paytm, Eka Care, and so on. So you can use any of them. So please try it out. If you have a Practo app or an Arogya Setu app, you can actually go in there, find ABHA, and you can see that it's very, very easy for you to do and get your own ABHA. And ABHA becomes your account into which all digital health information can be deposited. This also actually works for anybody who doesn't even use a phone. So in fact, in the government of Karnataka, uh, the, everybody, almost 1.7 crore people are getting issued something that the government of Karnataka has called an ABARK card. And on the ABARK card, there's a little QR code and that QR code also contains an ABHA. And so if somebody were to bring such a card, you can actually scan it and collect their ABHA. Go next. Now, one of the things that ABDM is doing is actually making the experience, the digital experience, or even a physical, even a physical world, what happens when, when somebody walks into your hospital or clinic or lab. So you can actually experience this. Uh, this has been rolled out in more than 200 government hospitals across Karnataka. So you walk into any of these government hospitals, you can actually see this in action. Uh, there's a little QR code that's now available. Happy to share with you that even in a government hospital where like, for example, Jainagar General Hospital gets an OPD of about 600 patients a day. More than 300 patients are actually using the scan and share, as it's called, to actually register because they can skip the queue. So how it works is you basically have, you can click on that uh, a little more. So how it works is you go to a hospital or a clinic, there's a little QR code. Usually you can paste this at your reception counter. You can use any of these PHR apps I spoke about. And you simply scan and when you scan, it will show you a little question saying, hey, Mr. Patient, are you okay to share your mobile number, name, ABHA, age, address, date of birth with this particular hospital? And if the user says yes, then you're instantly registered. So on the other side, in your software that you're using at your hospital or clinic, all the information of the patient comes in completely digitally and instantly. And so it's a clean way to make the registration very fast. And in fact, in our experience, uh, in these government hospitals where they have very long queues, what used to take 50 minutes for a registration, people are now able to do in about five minutes. So it's got very, very good feedback from the market. So one of the first things that you can see as you introduce ABDM is this whole idea of being able to register your patients digitally. Now, what else do your patients really care about from a digital perspective? So they care about the fact that after they finish that consultation with you, am I getting my records, my lab records, or my prescription, or my consultation note on my phone, right? And that's the other thing that ABDM does in a way that's completely interoperable. So ABDM will allow you to use your records and the way it does it, and this is a little bit technical, but uh, what you see in the middle there is basically what we call as the uh, software systems, we call them as digital public goods. Why? That's why the term DPGs. This is what the government or the National Health Authority is running. 
and then we talked about how every user can get an ABHA using any PHR app. Now, what have, what they do with that is when they come to your clinic or hospital, they share it by scanning. And once they share it by scanning with your software, your software, whenever you create a new health record for a person for whom you have captured an ABHA, it will do this construct that we call as linking. And in the idea of linking is it simply says that I am holding a health record for this particular person who gave me an ABBA. It does not share the health record itself. It simply says I have an access and that health record continues to stay with you in your software that you are using. But what also happens is that the user now gets a notification. So on their phone, they'll get a pop-up saying, hey, there's now a new health record that's linked to your ABBA and they can actually access it, view it, and make it part of their longitudinal health record. So that's how the ABDM system works. Next slide, please. Now, let us say that somebody does come to your hospital, but they don't actually, uh, you know, they don't share their ABHA with you at that point of registration, you know, because not everybody may scan and share. So the ABDM architecture also allows you to find your health records which you have gone to for any hospital or clinic that you have also gone in the past. So you can actually open your phone on your PHR app. You can say, hey, I went to this clinic or this hospital last month. Find me my records in that particular place. Next slide, please. And you can click through that. Uh, basically, what actually happens is moment, even if I do not have an ABA, the, and if the health facility is participating in ABDM, so those are the two key conditions then whenever a new health record is generated, an SMS is sent if a mobile number is available with the facility. And once they click on that SMS, they can actually install a PHR app and they can actually collect and link their records onto their own phone. So next slide. So this approach that the government has taken is called as a federated architecture. It's quite important to understand that there is no central place where all these records are being put together. It's very similar to the paper world. Either the clinic or the doctor which created the health record has a copy and the patient has a copy. There is nobody else who has a copy. Of course, the patient can then share it with whichever other health doctor or patient, uh, doctor or clinic they want with their consent. So it's quite similar to that from an architecture and a thinking. So it's absolutely secure because of that. It's only available to either you as a doctor or a clinic or only available to the patient. It's pretty easy for you to participate. So if you're already using some software, you just need to make sure that you're using an ABDM compliant software. And also the way this is designed is, apart from that one change of capturing the ABHA during registration, almost there is no change to any other screens. So for you, there is not really much of a training or changes, and you can continue to use the same software as is. Only thing, any health record you now generate in your software, there is now an interoperable way by which it's getting added to a patient's longitudinal record and it's being able to be used. So the other benefit you, of course, you get, so please go back up. The other benefit that uh, you also get is that you will be able to now see any history. So when you see a patient who comes in and registers with scan and share, as this evolves with time, you will see that you can see that there are other health records linked with that patient and you will be able to say, okay, can I get access to your history? So wherever else they might have gone, whichever government or private hospital they might have gone, you'll also be able to access and see their history. And the more important thing, and we'll talk about that a bit later, is that using such a software will actually keep you up to date with India's personal data protection bill and the laws that are coming, which all of us in healthcare will have to comply to. Next slide. Now, we talked about how health records are shared under ABDM, but ABDM also has another construct, which is for digital health services, which is called the unified health interface. So now this is something that's happening to all of you doctors. Many of your patients are typically after they have an initial consultation with you or trying to follow up with you, either they're sending reports on WhatsApp, they're asking you queries on WhatsApp, they're doing it at all kinds of odd times. They, of course, expect you to be very responsive. And you would want to probably manage these better. In many cases, you might feel that, hey, why am I doing this for free? Why can't I charge for some of these transactions? So one of the things that we are trying to get done at ABDM is to actually enable you doctors to do all of these 
using something that's called as UHI. So just like you have experienced UPI for payments, we are hoping that you will all adopt UHI for your digital health interactions. Go next, please. So how exactly does this work? So the very first thing that you would have to do as a doctor is you have to go and register yourself with something that ABDM has set up as called the healthcare professionals registry. So when you do that, you get a doctor ID. What you need to do for that is, so if you're in Karnataka, for example, you will put your KMC number. It will fetch all the details from the state. You may have to add in certain additional information and then you say, okay, this is my submission. And then uh, there is a little bit of a check that's done. If it's not automatically approved, uh, you will then get yourself what we call as a HPR ID or a doctor ID. The next thing that you would need to do is you will need to use an ABDM UHI certified software. So people like Practo are all working hard to make sure that they get their software to be UHI compatible. So what do you do in the software? So you log in into your software and there you can say, hey, I would like to have digital interactions. And so you can configure when would you like to be available for either teleconsultations or physical consultations? How much would you like to charge for your services? How much would you like to charge for say a new consultation versus a review consultation? And also whether I would like to provide this only on chat or I would like, I'm happy to do this on chat, audio and video, right? And then when you have patients coming in, you can now start sharing your doctor ID with your patients. And what your patients can do is they can now use any UHI compatible app. And so Arogi Setu, Practo and many others are actually building apps that are going to be UHI compatible. What they do in that is they simply put your doctor ID so they can find you. They can actually search you for you by name too. They can now book an appointment. That appointment can be a digital appointment or a physical appointment. It shows them how much is it that you want to charge. They make the payments for it. They can also share their health records. So if they have any health history that they have attached to their ABHA account, they can actually share that with you. They can chat or they can talk with you. And then whenever you fill out a prescription in your software, it gets added back to their longitudinal health record. And all of this is what UHI is enabling. UHI is right now for the government of India at a stage where partners like Practo are testing to make sure that they are fully ready and it should be launched in the coming days. So what I showed you for health records is already available and live and you can start that right now. UHI is going to come up in this year, in the next couple of months, it's expected to go live. Now, why should you actually participate in ABDM? I think there are already several benefits I spoke about, but let's talk a bit more about that. Go next. So the very first thing is, of course, it enables you to provide better care. The more information you have about what happened to the patient and the patient history, the more easy is it for you to actually use that information and provide better care. And we hope this whole thing, and especially there are several branches of medicine where we see people walking around with very thick files, and we think that software will also get better. The software that you use will get better, where for specialties and certain specialties, we expect many software entities to create specialized views, which is based on history so that you can have a better understanding of how you want to give care for your patients. So imagine for diabetic history or even your uh, other histories where you can have graphs over time and other things that will really help you. The second thing, like I said, you will get better access to images uh, on a digital interface, higher resolution apart from what you already see on your uh, little printed films. So these are all things that will really be enable you to do a better job at your practice. The second thing is the data privacy laws. So many of you might be reading that the government is introducing the data protection bill in the upcoming budget session, which is next month in February. Uh, it's already put the privacy bill out and there's been a lot of uh, feedback and uh, consultations that are happening. Now, one of the things that the National Health Authority has been working on is to make sure that uh, what will happen when the bill comes out is that anybody holding personal data will have to be compliant with the bill. So all healthcare is covered because all of us in healthcare collect information like the personal data of patients. Also, we create data, health data, which is also seen as personal data of patients. Uh, and so we would need to comply with the personal data protection bill. So the easiest way for a health facility to comply with the personal data protection bill will be to use an ABDM certified software. 
So you simply adopt the ABDM certified software and what the software helps the doctors do is to make sure that in all the legal provisions that the bill has in terms of the rights that it has to provide to your patients are all incorporated within the software practice itself. Go next. And finally, the government wants all doctors to actually adopt ABDM. So like in the West, it is actually now paying money for you to adopt these things. So there are incentives in place. You can earn, depending on the size of your practice, you can earn fairly significant. So right now, if you are a hospital with at least 10 beds or you're running a lab, doesn't matter in what format, uh, you actually can earn up to about 20 rupees per health record shared above what we call as a base minimum. So there is a little calculator that's also available. So if you go to ABDM, dot gov dot in slash dhis you can also find the little calculator where you can say okay how many patients are you seeing therefore how many health records from your clinic or lab you're generating you can plug that in and it'll actually show you how so i put a little example of a lab that's doing about say a thousand health records a month can earn up to about an additional ten thousand rupees in incentives for the lab so that's a reasonable amount of money and the government has put in up to almost a hundred crores of money that can be taken up by the health ecosystem as part of this. So there is money not just for the uh, doctors and the clinics, but there's also some money that's been put away for people like Practo who are helping you uh, go digital in this whole thing. So the government is very clearly extremely serious about getting ABDM rolled out and getting it adopted across the doctor ecosystem. You are likely to also see the government present in and uh, talking about this in pretty much every CME event, uh, every doctor related uh, conference that's happening over this year as it tries to promote this into the doctor community. Next slide, please. So how do you actually get started? Now, one of the things that we have done is uh, there's a website that's the abdm.go.in website that all of you should get familiar with. Uh, you, we have a slide there called our partners. You can actually go see which are all the companies that are making ABDM certified software. So as long as you're using a software, which is ABDM certified, you should be able to get most of the benefits and also the incentives that are aligned with it. The incentives, by the way, are effective from Jan 1st. So as long as you get in there and you start linking, the earlier you start linking, the more opportunity you have to make money. And it's likely that these incentives will be there uh, for some period of time, at least the next couple of years for sure. So do make the best of it to try to take some money from what the government is putting out. Next slide, please. So one of the key criteria that you need to earn these incentives is that your clinic, your hospital or your lab needs to be registered. You can either do that by going to facility.abdm.gov.in or people like Practo are actually building those features where you can actually do it from your existing Practor a login. So look out for that and there'll be training and sessions by your software partner to help you get going with the ABDM uh, setup. Next slide. So that's about it from my side. So uh, this is what ABDM is doing. It's a very interesting point in time for India. Um, we believe that this is going to be actually very useful for patients and as well as for doctors. As this happens, remember that it is likely that patients are going to see these experiences in your other hospitals, clinics. Like I said, they're going to experience it in government hospitals uh, in Karnataka. So it's quite important that the private sector be catch up and be ready as patients start to also demand all their health records and healthcare be available to them on any of the apps that they're seeing on their phone. So thank you. Uh, Abhinav, all yours. So just a short set on the numbers. So the we call this that the highway is open. We are looking to put traffic on it, but uh, you, know, you may be quite surprised by the numbers. In fact, as it stands today, more than 30 crore people have already got their abhas. So it's a fairly large percentage of the population already there. We have more than 1 lakh healthcare professionals registered and almost 1.73 lakh health facilities that have come on board. A large percentage of this on the right side is currently in the public sector but we are seeing very rapid adoption in the private sector too. So make sure that you join this uh, and uh, happy to help. Uh, and I'm sure people from Practo will guide you through the process. Thank you.
thanks kiran uh, for uh, uh, walking us through abdm and and of what's uh, value its arts for the provider community um and and taking time today um so we want to kind of cover very quickly a little bit about how practo can actually help you adopt abdm uh, but before i get there uh, i wanted to kind of talk a little bit about uh, our journey uh, because we actually started back in 2008 uh, if you can go to the next slide um, and all of practo's uh, journey actually started from digital health record and how can we help providers actually adopt uh, technology um and back in 2008 uh, uh, when me and sashank actually started the company we visited a large set of doctors and uh, uh, the large one very common uh, theme uh, and feedback that we got from initial set of doctors is they had uh, cupboards full of files of patients um kept at the clinic and i remember uh, one of our early customers kind of asking us when do you think the day will come when i can get rid of this and and we will completely move to a digital uh, health record management um and then we have been at it for last 14 years uh, we have taken various different uh, cracks at it uh, but we are very excited to see um we are reaching a point where we now have a national standard and i think that was absolutely required uh, for this kind of ecosystem to be created it's impossible for one private company to actually create and get adoption going even though we tried and we got some success and um, uh, we are a lot more uh, hopeful that with now abdm we will see a lot more adoption happen and uh, the other thing that we if we go to the next slide and the other thing that uh, has been very important uh, part of our journey um were when i met uh, one of our early customers um in back in 2008 and uh, uh, one of the constant feedback that we got from our doctors always have been that a lot of software company has come they given the software but they keep disappearing um and 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 we actually promised doctors that we going to be one of those companies which going to stick around and help them uh, digitize as their technology evolves um when we made that promise we weren't very sure of how we going to fulfill it but uh, 14 years later uh, uh, we don't have hard data but most probably we are the only company which are still providing uh, a software uh, for doctors and we have managed and doctors have now used to manage uh, almost 193 million appointments in factory over the last 14 years and uh, 20 mil 21 million appointments just in 2022 um alone uh, we have more than 20000 doctors using it and now we are actually launching factory uh, um which is now abdm compliant we are still in early roll out so it will be reaching out to all the doctors over the next few weeks um but a doctor will be able to actually Uh, register as Kiran said. Uh, you can, you don't need to go anywhere. You already have uh, inputted all your data. Uh, if you have already added everything to Ray and you use Ray today, then it's just clicking one button to register your facility on ABDM. Uh, uh, Practoray will also generate a QR code for you, uh, where which you can actually put into your clinic and uh, patients can actually scan that and registered and that should help you manage your front desk, uh, your reception. your uh, registration counters a lot uh, faster um you can create and link health records and to patients abha id and as kiran mentioned uh, uh, there are now incentive programs uh, which allow you to actually uh, get paid by the government to actually adopt uh, this technology um uh, practo has always had practo drive where you can share health records with patient we are now over the next few weeks launching where we are converting the existing practo drive to abdm compliant phr um so you do you just uh, accept uh, the change and every health record that is being created in a practo ray automatically gets shared with the patient if our address is uh, available and uh, sometime early next month in february we we will be launching uh, the final feature of abdm on ray with regards to health record where you can actually request patient to share their health data and you should be able to see that uh uh within practoray itself 
Um, so when we go, can we go to the, so these are some of the uh, quick uh, look at uh, how you can actually utilize that uh, within Practory. Uh, so like I said, uh, Practory will allow you to generate a QR code, uh, uh, which you can actually put within the uh, within your clinic and patients can actually scan this to register. All the data gets added in Practory automatically. Patient profile is created. If the patient already exists, we actually map that patient to your existing patient. Uh, and all of this is available at no additional cost. You can also uh, create a new ABHA address from within Practory if, if the patient needs that, if they don't have it. And you can register the patient, not just through uh, patient sharing, but you can also add patient's ABHA address within Ray to fetch all their details and populate their registration. Um, and then on the uh, patient record side, Practo has uh, always provided a digital prescription uh, clinical notes uh, uh, feature in Practo Ray available not just on desktop, but also on our mobile app. Um, and as you create these health records, if you have enabled the ABA uh, facility uh, registration done and uh, enable the feature that will automatically get linked and shared with patient. And Kiran said, we, we really believe that more and more patients will start asking for this feature. Um, we have already seen a massive trend over the last few years where more patients are looking for digital prescription than physical handwritten one. Um, and not just that, like I said, in early February, in the same interface uh, from where you manage patient health data, there, there's the option to import records and you can just create right clicking there generate a consent request once the patient approve all the health data gets imported and you can see it side by side with your own data and data coming from other doctors uh, within Practory. Uh, apart from this, um, we are also working on UHI as uh, which is going to allow doctors to provide appointment booking and online consultation. Um, Practor has already had this feature for a long period of time. Uh, but going forward within Practory, you should you would be able to enable UHI independently. Uh, you don't need to uh, have a prime subscription for it. You, know, you can enable uh, appointment booking and online consultation. If you have been using Practory, it's fairly easy. Uh, it's just one click, your calendar and all the data automatically gets synced. Your appointments actually show up. You can use the same pro app for providing online consultation, whether the patient is coming from Practos, uh, current app, either the patient is using Aroge Setu app, whether the patient is using Paytm app, uh, you should be able to, using your same experience on the provider side, will be able to provide both online and offline appointment booking. So that's Factor Ray. Uh, over the next few weeks, we will be uh, rolling out these features and in, in phases. Thank you so much for taking the time. We are very excited of what's going to be possible uh, in healthcare over the next few years with the great work done by, uh, like Kiran said, the highways have been put in. Uh, uh, we are very excited. Some of the early doctors who are adopting it, we're seeing very encouraging sign. Um, and we are available as always to help you understand this better, help you in this journey and get maximum value uh, of this great infrastructure that has been created. Thank you, uh, Abhinav, Kiran, and Dr. Alex. Uh, and thank you, everyone. Uh, we also have a couple of questions uh, come in. Come in. Uh, before that, I would just like to say that we have also we are also creating a WhatsApp community to answer any questions that you might have and to share updates on ABDM and everything that's going to follow with ABDM. We've put out the link in the chat box and you can join the WhatsApp community through that link. Moving on to the questions. Uh, how will ABDM help uh, a clinic with under 10 consultations? Uh, Kiran, do you want to take that question and maybe uh, Dr. Alex? Or so Abhinav? I think, uh, yeah, so under 10 consultations, I presume that's under 10 consultations per day or? Sorry, uh, 10 sorry it's, un under it's under 100, sorry, my bad. Oh, okay, uh, oh, 100 my. consultations per day? Hopefully, oh, yeah, but yeah. So see, see, I think uh, uh, there are two parts to this, right? I think ABDM is generally going to be helpful to everyone as long as you believe that it's important for you to share your health information with your patients and 
that even as this as india develops in this side you will also get access back to uh, health records and other information that where the patient is uh, taking from the incentive of course uh, for earning the incentives there is a minimum slab level that the government has put up so you'll have to look at those slab levels uh, if you run your own lab uh, there's a certain slab for that uh, and you are going to be paid only for transactions linked on the top of the slab similarly if you are at 10 bedded hospitals there is a slab of a 50 transactions per bed uh, per month a kind of a minimal slab so which means for a 10 bed hospital is about 500 transactions and so above 500 records being linked is where the payment can come now these numbers were actually put in to make sure that there is at least some minimal uh, contribution uh, that's already starting and only for those the uh, pieces are there but there is actually no upper limit in fact the upper limit has been set into crores so uh, for practitioners who are actually having say fairly significant data there's a uh, there could be quite a bit of benefit uh, from the financial side too as this develops uh, there is some work that the government is doing to make sure that individual clinics and practitioners can also benefit right now that money flow uh, is going into practo and so we are looking at still investigating how we can actually increase that amount that uh, is paid so that then practo can pay you that's simply be, being done to actually uh, make the processing uh, challenges that a large government can have uh, to become easier and that's still work in progress okay thanks karen uh, another question that we have i think uh, Abhinav, you could take this up. How can I access Ray if my location doesn't permit it? Um, yeah, so uh, one of the things that uh, we have actually uh, doing uh, with Ray going forward, even though historically uh, Ray has been available on almost all parts of India, we do understand that there has been some limitation. Uh, but going forward, actually Ray. As a software product, you can use anywhere in the country. Um, uh, even though the uh, Practo consumer products and Practo Prime and Practo uh, Prime Consult uh, products are limited and have access uh, not available in all parts of the country yet. Uh, from a software perspective, uh, we have customers uh, utilizing Ray. Uh, Practo Ray as a software in almost 100 plus cities across the country already. Uh, we are actually setting up uh, more uh, support available online uh, to helping doctors on board. Uh, but our goal for the next few years is going to be make sure that Practo Ray is available to every doctor in the every part of the country, whether a small city, a town, a village, to the largest city in the country, and get them opportunity to participate. Uh, with UHI, uh, we expect that uh, the discovery is going to become a lot more ubiquitous uh, for the patients. And uh, we will ensure that uh, the doctor's community who is actually utilizing Practore are able to participate in the ecosystem from all parts of the country. Thanks, Abhinav. Uh, another question is, on the technology, what factors do I need to consider while choosing a software partner? Abhinav, do you want to take that one? And maybe Kiran can step so in. I will, I will let Kiran to kind of step in uh, sure. uh, first on, uh, on this. Uh, one of the things that the government has been doing is uh, it has been actually trying to put out a set of uh, what we call as a minimal viable kind of product guidelines. So you can find them. Uh, if you go to uh, abdm.gov.in slash partners, you will see a little pop-up and you'll see uh, a bunch of a simple guideline which says, hey, what are the features that a good clinic management software or a good hospital management software should have? And so uh, it is also one of the criteria that uh, usually is looked at uh, you know, as we go forward on ABDM certification or compliance to see you know how well so you will find a online comparison that uh, the government is actually providing so that it makes it easier for uh, doctors uh, to make a decision on what's important for them and then to pick the solution that would be a best fit for them thanks Aaron. yeah uh, uh, definitely kind of adding a couple of things uh 
from what Kiran said, of course, uh, we have our own software product, so it may seem a little biased, but um, I think the, the com doctor community is fairly large and, and the needs are very large, and I don't think Pacto alone can fulfill all the doctors in, um, and all the segments and all the locations. So some of the things that we have seen um, have been very uh, important uh, for doctor community over the last 14 years we have been. Uh, one has definitely been ease of use. Uh, historically, one of the big challenges uh, and, and, and uh, that we have seen in a lot of doctors is getting the software, but actually not being able to implement, adopt, and utilize the product. Um, so that's, that's something definitely to keep considered. Um, the second has been uh, availability on various platforms. So India, given um, a lot of, at least in the smaller clinic setups, uh, the cost of actually putting up a desktop, putting up a laptop uh, may actually be uh, prohibitive. And being actually able to use your, just your phone to actually do most of the work in smaller setup is actually very helpful. Um, the third is just the track record, uh, uh, kind of looking at how does the company actually charges for the product, how long they have been there, what is their monetization model, um, uh, what is their data security privacy, what kind of certification they have, um, and and these are some of the factors to kind of keep in mind. And of course, the last uh, thing is uh, availability of support. Uh, is the support uh, uh, is the, uh, the the company available on on phone, on email, on chat? Can you actually just reach out to the company from within the product itself if you're facing an issue? So these are some of the factors that actually we have seen doctors deeply care about uh, when choosing a software. And I think these will continue to be a very important factors years to come as doctors choose this software to implement in their establishment. Thanks. Uh, we have one last question. Uh, how secure is the data under ABDM? Kiran, do you want to address that? Uh, yeah. So I think, uh, you know, companies like Practor have always been, I know, aware that they've been focused on data security and uh, good data security practices, but that has not been a uh, uh, you know, something that we have, we see across India and you would have read about quite a few of data breaches, uh, that might have happened in the, also in the conversation with doctors, I think, you know, Abhinav also talked about, you know, how long are you going to be in business kind of questions that doctors have when they start using a software, they're constantly worried about whether, you know, if the, what happens if the software guy kind of goes out of business. So these are some of two of these questions that I think ABDM is actually trying to address head on. ABDM certification actually involves a very key step, which is what we call as a them, the software entity being able to pass the security testing that has been set up and the security practices that have been set up uh, from a compliance perspective by uh, the government. So the government says that, hey, as part of the certification, we want to make sure that you show us that your software has been well security tested. So there is a organization in India that's called Certain certain is the national body that actually defines a whole bunch of things that need to be done for making sure your software is secure and every software that's abdm compliant has to pass through what we call as a vasa security test from any certified certain m paneled organization so that's a big step that all of them will have to do so that automatically guarantees to some extent the security and the privacy of the information that's being held in the software the second part I just want to address is that one of the things that ABDM is also working on is to make sure there is what we call as portability. So in the future, if the doctor wants to go from software A to software B, uh, we are looking to make sure that everybody who is ABDM compliant will actually provide the option to export the data that they're holding so that the doctor can then take it into any other new software and then continue forward with whatever new software that they want. So this is something that's coming. And so again, that's another reason to choose an ABDM compliant software that's going on. The overall security, in fact, like I told you, we are a fed, ABDM uses what we call as a federated architecture. So there isn't really any copy of the health records except in the clinic or the doctor that produced it, as well as in the hands of the patient. And that model itself actually improves the overall security and privacy of how it happens and all the data exchange that happens in ABDM is completely encrypted and it's encrypted and digitally signed so that only the parties that are exchanging it can actually open it.
Great, thank you, Kiran. So I think that's all the questions that we have for today. Thank you everyone for joining in and thank you for giving your time for this webinar. Feel free to join the WhatsApp group if you have any more questions and we will address it there. Thank you everyone and have a great Sunday. Thanks, thank Dr. Alex. Thanks.